usually we work out around 9 45 10 o'clock uh, but today we have a special guest uh, getting a drug test a uh, blood and urine test found out yesterday at 3 15 p.m that uh, a guy was driving up from south carolina so nice so 15 hours later we're, we're going to piss test you which is so cool so hey random drug test random randomly fell on the champ random <laughs> random <laughs> are you still allowed to compete as far as you know? As far as I know. I can't work out for 30 minutes because I gave so much blood. All right. Extra 30 at the end of the day. Extra 30. Uh, <laughs> he was no, All no joking around. All I, I want to know how you draw the short straw and have to watch somebody pee. Like, actually, pants down, Whoa. watch Staring you pee. Staring straight at your, yeah. your guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Good thing you don't have a... Keep Waiting to see what's going down, little, the morning programming sesh after the warm up. So, just kind of a little informal chit chat, thinking about what they've done the last couple of days and seeing where they might go right now. It's probably one of many. <laughs> Slowly at least starting to melt away a yeah. little bit. It's gonna be a, in a weird way, kind of advantageous, at least if a newer athlete shows up the games and they get overwhelmed by the cameras. Yeah. And you're like, well, it's just how I have to work out all the time. It's just part of it, man. Get over it. 
Well, it's probably going to hurt the head of many a young man in academia. Is you know you're not you're not sitting down with graph paper, scratching out a very detailed, rigid two to three week mezzo cycle. This percentage. <laughs> not at all. Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I mean. We'll pick out a squat program and we'll do that for however, whatever the duration is. Or we'll pick out a deadlift program or um, do an Olympic cycle or some, just something, you know, to change it up. But really, there's no, there's no real method to the madness. Lift, lift something heavy usually once a day, maybe twice, depends. Get out of breath a lot. When it's all consuming, mm -hmm. you know, you've got somebody like me just watching, cheering from the sidelines. It looks great, looks cool. And you know, you're a humble <coughs> humble dude, so you probably don't want to hear it. But truth be told, you know, you've earned the title of the champ. And there's, I'm sure, pros that come with that and cons that come with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what, you know, what the pros I would assume are you get to do what you, you know, enjoy for the living, you're not yeah, commuting exactly. to an office. You know, but, I'm, I'm blessed beyond belief I get to do, I wake up every day and I enjoy what I do. Now it doesn't mean I enjoy all day of what I do. I get, you know, I get to work out for a living. Sounds awesome. It is awesome. But then there's days where you're like that everybody else has that you're like, man, it'd be nice if I could just sit on the couch all day or you know do whatever. But even on a Saturday or a Sunday or a holiday, there's still that in the back of your mind. You got to do something. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have that that luxury of being like, you know what? If I take off today or don't do something today or it's not going to kill me or not going to affect me, but every day gonna, it's going to do something. So how much of what you just mentioned, you know, talking holidays or just an occasion like to sit on the, you know, chill or whatnot, how much after all these years is the physical grind versus the mental grind, what kind of weighs on you more? Physically feel awesome. I, I mean, I'll do CrossFit for the rest of my life. Um, I love love doing what I do, but the mental is what really takes, it's just, what does that mean? Just every day. It's, it's that, you know, what we talked about is you, there's no, there's no day, real day off. There's no, holidays aren't holidays. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily even the, the working out, but it's the thinking about working out, like <laughs> the stress of, like me and James talked about this, when I travel, it just stresses me out the entire time because I'm like, man, I, sh I should be doing this. I should be doing that. It's not necessarily, it's probably not even hurting me that I'm not working out that day. I could use the rest. Right. But mentally, it's like, I've got to be doing something. If I'm not doing something, I'm, I'm falling behind or it's affecting me or it's, you know, and it's just one of those things that, you know, it's not just affecting me. It's, you know, it's everybody. So all, everybody that's close to me. So. And what's the... What's the, the pressure like just because you are, you're representing, you know, yourself. You're, you know, when people see you, mm -hmm. they think of not just Rich Froney, but they think of the sport. They mm -hmm. think of CrossFit. So you're kind of, whether you want to be or not, an ambassador of the program. And when you meet somebody, I would, I would assume you have to be kind of on. Yep. Or, you know, how is, how is that? That's just, you know, it's just, it comes with the territory. It's been a gradual growing into the last four years. You know, I talk a lot about um, four years ago, you wouldn't have caught me. I had to speak to 5,000 people this weekend. Four years ago, you wouldn't have got me up on that stage, period. Now it's it's just part of it. I'm fine talking in front of groups. I'm fine uh, hanging out, having people around. My biggest fears before CrossFit were speaking in front of people and then um, large crowds. So those are welcome, two things. Welcome yeah, to hell. Exactly. So, you know, and still the crowds, like, um, when we, you know, when there's a bunch of people around me, I start getting a little, like, Jason loves it. Jason eats that stuff up, mm -hmm. and he's great at that. When, you know, when we go to, we went overseas, I guess it was last year, we did the Invitational. Jason goes out into the, the sea of people, and like people pulling on you and one picture left and right that's about as far from my comfort zone as possible and that exhausts me more than actual working out going and you know smiling for pictures and doing all that stuff but, you know and I enjoy it and I'm glad that you know people want that sure it's, it's it, it takes a toll on me a little bit 
Yeah, it's a very interesting side of it. Yeah, and you don't think about that. You know, growing up, everybody wants, or most guys want to be a professional baseball player, a professional football player, and then you see all these professional athletes, and I'm nowhere near, you know, the, the Tom Brady or the Peyton Manning that can't go out and, I mean, they can't do anything, literally. They right. can't go out or they get stopped. But at a CrossFit event, it's a very similar feeling. But I can't imagine having to live like that. You can't live. And everybody's like, oh, you don't, you can't feel sorry for them. They did it themselves. And you're like, yes, no. They didn't chase that. <laughs> no, exactly. So we all talk about you've got to figure out what your weaknesses are. You've got to, you know, work on those weaknesses, but not too much to where you create other weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, it's, it's a never-ending battle. And it's there's no secret formula. It's just hard work. I don't care who tells me to row until the games. I'm not. Uh-uh. How shitty was that half marathon? It was the worst thing I've ever done in my athletic, physical, just career, just mentally. I was gonna say pain or boredom, yes. or just yes. or both. Grind. Both. It was absolutely the worst thing ever. Uh, I have not done that one. Now. Don't ever do. Everybody's like, "Hey, Rich, I'm running the half marathon." I'm like, "You're an idiot." You're like, what? what? I want to say you're an idiot. <laughs> what? Every time. <laughs> He'll do 20 swings. I'll do 20 swings. After I'm done with 20 swings, he's gonna do 20 burpees. I'll do 20 burpees. That's round one. Just keep going for eight minutes. Too many. Good day. I said, as, as an outside observer, never having worked out with the crew here, what I found intriguing was there was like three potential last workouts. Yeah. <laughs> like this kind of thing, it's like, you know, there's kind of no one left, there's kind of wandered, and then like, oh, we had this thing, and one thing came up, and then, and it was like, cool, yeah, we did a second one unexpected. And then no one left, <laughs> you know, and there was some wandering over the dry race board. Son of a bitch. That was like the other well, day. Surprise, surprise, well, it's surprise. usually just get as much done as we can until 5.30. Yeah. Since you guys are here, we went a little longer. Hillary's not feeling good, so she's just kind of hanging out. So I can't spend time with her because she's sick, because I'll get sick. And, you know. It's math. It's simple math. But it's usually like 5.15. And I can tell, like, we'll both kind of be looking at each other, and then we'll be any talking. And we'll be, like, looking at different objects in the room. And it's like, like when we did Ben's workout the other yeah. night. Like, I could tell where that was headed. There was yeah. a bar go on the ground, and I'm like, damn. Yeah. You know, it's only gonna take nine minutes, six right. minutes. So I, back in 2009, I had a, I was getting my undergrad in exercise science uh, at Tennessee Tech in Cookville. And one of my professors who was the head strength coach uh, showed us some videos and which happened to be in this website called CrossFit.com. And I'm about to play some hockey, we're in, uh, Sparta, no, Tennessee, no, and people who think Cookville is a small town in the middle of nowhere, welcome to Sparta. <laughs> this is our second week in a row though, so don't be too upset <laughs> at the, the show. Pat. A little souvenir. A little something from Tennessee. <laughs> Take that, California. <laughs> you gotta have fun. What's the point in being fit if you're not gonna do anything or use it? So uh, we don't do this all the time, but when we can, we can get out here and have some fun and actually use what we do. And a uh, good group of guys out here, and nobody's nobody's too aggressive. Where there's a real imminent danger of getting too injured. 
I got took two pucks off the knees last week, each knee, and that wasn't pleasant, but uh, it's still fun. I'd, I'd go crazy if I was living in a padded room all the time. So, uh, rumor's true, yeah, we did play tackle football a few times a few weeks ago, so, uh, yeah. And like you said, though, if you're doing it timidly and afraid of getting hurt, you're probably going to get hurt. But when you do it, just go all out. So that's the way, I've, the way I was brought up. Don't do anything halfway. Whether, you, whether you've heard this or not, or I've said it to your face, I've certainly heard it. Fill in the blank. Could be an open event, you know, like a live open competition, a regional event, or the games itself. It would be great to see Rich Froning lose for our sport. You know, because it was like the same person again and again and again. People were like, well, why is there no one else competing? But then I'm like, oh, it's back and forth. Like, like people thought it was great. The Team USA lost this year because now next year is like, what's going to happen? Like, it's not like domination, domination, domination. So, have you heard that? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> and does that, I mean, <laughs> you're a disciplined dude. Does that in any way, shape, or form influence or affect it? Yeah, it's a motivation. It's, uh... <laughs> there's always motivation when people not necessarily want to hate or um, downplay what you do it's, it's definitely a motivation um, people making comments people you know ah, he's not as hungry as he was he's won two last year it was like he's won two times he's taking it easy this year no mm -hmm. um, and so now one more time one more time and like I asked you off, off camera, does uh does one more time in your mind, does it have to end on a victory? It needs to end on a victory. It doesn't have to end on a victory, but it needs to. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if my lawyer decipher that. But I like that. <laughs> no, that's cool.